it's easy to forget the scale of the world around us and comprehend exactly how small we are in comparison to the rest of existence. It's not until you have a moment of stillness to contemplate the curiosities of life itself or look up into the night sky and attempt to fathom the fact we are living on a floating rock in the universe. We share our planet with animals of different sizes, many of which are smaller than us. When we take a closer look to the ground and watch the ants scurry about the earth at almost microscopic sizes, it's easy to think we are the giants of the universe. And yet, if we take a step back and take a look at everything around us, beyond earth and into the cosmos, we are humbly reminded that in the grand scheme of the universe, we are the microorganisms and space is the giant a vast frontier larger than anything you could ever imagine. To better paint a picture of our role in the cosmos, we must give context to the true and terrifying size of the universe. To get a grasp on the size and scope of space, we must first go back to the very beginning, just as the Big Bang was underway and the laws of physics were born. Prior to the Big Bang and formation of the modern universe, astronomers theorized there was nothing but a singularity the size of an atom or potentially even smaller. This singularity, an eternal existence that had no creation itself in the minds of experts, eventually grew intensely hot and dense to near-infinite proportions. Unable to exist in its current state, an explosive event we now call the Big Bang occurred, an event larger than even the most explosive supernovae or gamma-ray burst. In an instance timed at less than one trillionth of a second, the universe went from being a singularity to what we think of when we hear the word universe in modern times. With this chaotic explosion came a drastic difference in size as well. In the same fraction of a second, the universe expanded in a process called inflation. From being smaller than an atom, to a vast frontier estimated to measure at an octillion times larger than the original singularity. For context, an octillion is one followed by 27 zeros, but when multiplied by a size of near-infinite zero, it's not as big as you might think. Depending on when the inflation of the singularity reached the Big Bang, determines its first ever measurement. If the inflation to Big Bang timing occurred at the microscopically faster length of 10 to the negative 30th power seconds, the universe could have initially been about 168 meters. 168 meters is about the size of a skyscraper filled block in downtown Manhattan in New York City. While both scenarios are quite drastic in scope, it's incredible to think that for a mere moment, the universe was the size of our brain, and even wilder to think about when you remember that the universe resembles our brain structure in general. Astronomers believe that soon after the one trillionth of a second the universe first materialized, and we had a small range of measurements, the cosmos was about the size of a sun-to-earth radial sphere. In other words, if you made a point in the center of Earth, connected it to a point in the center of the sun, and drew a perfect circle to maintain the same length of radius, that's what the universe would have looked like. If it's hard to comprehend the cosmos stretching from our atmosphere to our closest star, it may not be worth the effort, as this particular shape of the universe only lasted less than the time it takes to blink. Once the universe hit the second mark, true expansion could begin. While space was much too hot to harbor nuclei in a stable state, and featured a vast sea of boiling plasma, it grew to the size of 20 light years in diameter. For a better visual, if you initiated the same exercise as before, and drew a line starting from the Sun and stretching straight to the Milky Way star system Ross 154, and drew a perfect circle using that radius, you'd have the size of the universe a second after birth. Again, compared to what the universe is today, a 20 light year long cosmos is a needle in a haystack. However, it didn't take long for the universe to reach an expansion acceleration rate that would dwarf the modern day rate by a figure of 10 octillion. 
By the time the universe reached one years old, burning at a mean temperature of 2 million Kelvin, it dwarfed the size of our solar system and the surrounding stars tenfold. Two years later, around the universe's third birthday, it had grown to be about 100,000 light years in diameter, the size of the Milky Way, without any intention of slowing down. In the 13.8 billion years since, the universe has grown to an incomprehensible size, and continues to expand into the present day. As it stands today, the universe is estimated to be about 93 billion light years in diameter. It should be noted that when we say universe in this sense, we are referring to the observable universe. The universe in total is obviously impossible to measure, as it is unobservable, but certain predictive models give us at least a scientific assumption. One such model is the Bayesian model, named after English statistician Thomas Bayes, who sought to infer unobserved variables to calculate patterns across relationships between objects across space-time. The Bayesian model estimates the whole universe is 7 trillion light-years in diameter, a whopping 250 times the size of our observable portion of the cosmos. If the universe is truly that large, many wonder what could make up such a mind-blowing amount of space. Cosmologists, experts on the makeup of the universe, say the cosmos is 0.01% photons of radiation, 0.1% neutrinos, elementary particles of atoms that influence gravity, 4.9% matter that includes stars, planets, plasma, and black holes, 27% dark matter that has yet to be directly observed, and 68% dark energy, another unobserved theoretical force that is the proposed causation of our universe's expansion. The 68% of the universe that hasn't been officially defined beyond theoretical astronomy and cosmology is what makes a lot of people question the true size of the universe and if an accurate measurement can even be used in such a practice. The idea that the universe is constantly expanding is true, as we've covered in previous videos. In fact, the universe is expanding so fast, far parts of the cosmos will never interact, because the rate of expansion is faster than the rate of the speed of light. At face value, these rates make it seem impossible the observable universe could only be 93 billion light years in diameter but that's a testament to how big 93 billion light years is. For the universe to grow exponentially around all sides, it will take much more time before we cross into the 94 billion light year threshold. To give further context into how big the universe actually is, think about it in relation to Earth's distance from the Sun. To make it easier on the lives of scientists around the world, the unit of measurement based on the length from our Sun to our home planet is called an astronomical unit. One astronomical unit is 93 million miles long, or 150 million kilometers long. With our most updated technology traveling at the fastest speeds humanly possible, tracking one astronomical unit would take about 25 days. If you wanted to travel the lengths of a single light year, you would need to travel about 63,000 astronomical units, or 5.8 trillion miles and 9.4 trillion kilometers respectively, which would take about 4,315 years if you are traveling at the same speeds and forgetting about the logistics of the power needed to sustain such speeds. If you wanted to travel the lengths of the entire universe, you'd need to travel about 5.859 quintillion astronomical units or 544 sextillion miles and 878 sextillion kilometers respectively, which would take about 401 trillion years, or the time since the birth of the universe multiplied by almost 29,000, again throwing out the likelihood of ever having a power source, let alone materials that could support such an excursion. Remember, it takes about 31,709 years just to count to a trillion, so to explore it would take nearly an infinite amount of time that humanity simply has no comprehensible method to even consider achieving. Throw in the fact that the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, and it's easy to see why the absolute vastness of the cosmos can't even be considered a frontier. For frontiers are meant to be explored, 
and total universal exploration is merely a fairy tale. In fact, it's the volatility and general unknown nature of space's expansion that leaves the future size of the universe up to debate. The universe is predicted to expand for almost all of eternity. The question then becomes, when the universe does end, how big will it be before one of the major theories for the fate of the universe comes to fruition? The easy answer is that the universe will expand towards infinity, for billions upon billions of years and never stop growing until it either freezes over or rips into oblivion. While that may be the dominating theory, it's important to at least chart how we'll get there, and in what time frame. Ethan Siegel of Forbes predicted the universe will eventually reach 100 billion light years in diameter in 1.1 billion years from right now. This is the same time frame scientists have given Earth before the Sun is too close for our planet to be hospitable. So if humanity is able to survive itself and the changing climate for the next billion years or so, it will be around to see the universe reach 12 digits in diameter. It will only take another 9 billion years after that for the universe to stretch towards 200 billion light years long a much faster rate than 15 billion years for 100 billion light years. The universe will then double its size to 400 billion light years in another 13 billion years, and at this point, almost 99.5% of the universe will be made up of dark energy. At this point, the growth of the universe falls into a pattern of doubling its size every 12 billion years or so. It will reach 100 trillion light years in diameter by its 118th billionth birthday, and a quadrillion light years at 149 billion years old. Even as the universe stands now, the scope of its size is almost too much to comprehend. It's so large that comparing the universe and its inhabitants to humans and ants, and the microorganisms that make up both species, isn't even remotely close to a proper comparison. Regardless, there is a comfort knowing we aren't the biggest thing to exist in space, and that the wonder of the unknown will only grow larger as the years pass on, making our entire existence even more mysterious by the light year. Thanks for joining us for this week's Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week, where we will explore more of our infinite universe.